In his UEFA Pro thesis, Thiago Motta highlights two teams that have had a big influence on his principles as a manager. The first is Marcelo Bielsa's Leeds and the idea of a collective trust between players, where each player is aware of their role in the team and what they need to do to help the team progress. The second team is Joachim Lowe's Germany in 2014, specifically underlining the idea that all the players think of attacking while defending and think of defending while attacking. These two managers come from completely different backgrounds and footballing philosophies, but by combining these two ideas with his experience as a professional player, Thiago Motta is very quickly creating a tactical approach that is uniquely his. Let's take a look. Welcome back to Football Meta. All the stats you see in this video were brought to you by Soccerman's suite of X Value and their brand new virtual assistant, Ida, able to quickly generate insight into any player or team's performance. Use code FOOTBALLMETA at checkout for 25% off yearly subscriptions. Click the link in the description down below to get started. Thiago Motta was a winner. Throughout his time at Barcelona, Inter and PSG, he picked up 28 major trophies, including two Champions Leagues and eight league titles. So it's unsurprising that when a player of this level turns to management, his tactics are influenced by some of the greatest coaches in recent history. This is evident from what we are seeing during his time at Bologna. In just his second season in charge, Bologna have become one of the toughest teams in the league to beat, and are pushing for a spot in Europe next season. But for us to understand what's so special about this team, we first need to take a look at Thiago Motta's principles. In his thesis titled The Value of the Ball, Motta emphasizes the role of the ball as the single most important element of the game. Depending on how each manager sees the ball, it would lead to completely different approaches and styles of play. He contrasts the idea of two of his managers in 2009, Jose Mourinho's Inter and Giampiero Gasparini's Genoa. Both managers wanted to control the game with quick vertical passes, but the way they would achieve this was completely different. Jose Mourinho wanted his players to play between the lines, moving the ball up the pitch as quickly as possible. Inter and Mourinho wouldn't waste time, and the main objective was to get the ball forward and create chances when there was still space behind the defensive line for the strikers to run into. A perfect example is their two goals in the Champions League final against Bayern Munich in 2010. In contrast, Gasparini wanted a more elaborate control of their vertical play. Not only did he want his team to play between the lines, but would emphasize a more organized passing structure. For example, Motta would often look to play direct balls into Milito, but Gasparini insisted he first goes through the players between the lines. In this way, not only did this move the ball forward, but it did so in a way that also allowed him to have a proactive role in the team's attack, moving into the final third with more players. Both systems worked extremely well. Gasparini's Genoa finished the season in fifth, while Motta and Milito would go on to win the treble with Mourinho at Inter the following season. It's clear from these two examples that the ball plays a fundamental role in Thiago Motta's principles, but there are other elements that also play an important role. Further on in his thesis, another fundamental concept is the idea of a collective trust, or the importance of creating an environment in which each player has the courage to do what he felt was best for the team. To explain this, he uses an example of a typical Leeds attack from 2019. When building in the opposition's half, the left-back Stuart Dallas would move the ball out wide into the winger Jack Harrison, in an attempt to disrupt the opposition block and create space to attack. Once this space was created, he highlights the choice of Stuart Dallas in this moment, either staying in support and playing a pass into another player in this space, or attacking forward himself to receive the ball in a more advanced position. What Motta underlines from this simple pattern is that every player is a tactically important contributor to the development of the attack, which is determined by each player's self-confidence in possession of the ball, and their belief that they can have an impact on the game. In simpler terms, Thiago Motta wants every single player to be active in the move. Now, while managers like Bielsa and Mourinho had a big impact on his offensive principles, Motta took big inspiration from Joachim Lowe's Germany for his defensive mentality. Specifically, he recalls Italy versus Germany in the 2016 Euros, in which Italy had regained the ball five times in the opposition's half, while Germany had regained possession 22 times in Italy's half. Germany's players, as soon as they lost the ball, would position themselves around five meters away from their opponent, ready to instantly close them down and make it harder for Italy to find alternatives at times ending up with the whole German team within 10 meters of Italy's box, looking to snuff out any attack before it could even start. It's a concept that simply put is the counterpress, 
with the core focus always being the ball, and not giving the opposition time to create an attack. The counterpress is an extremely common principle in the modern game. For example, it's a huge part of Jurgen Klopp's philosophy, and a big reason behind his success at Liverpool and Dortmund. All these influences lead to Thiago Motta's principles of play, which are to emphasize the importance of confidence and controlling the ball, to focus on maintaining and actively seeking possession, and to recover the ball as quickly as possible. So what exactly does this look like on the pitch? Well, as you'd expect, Bologna are a team that dominate possession, sitting in the top five at 57% average per match, but they also complete the most amount of passes than any other team in the league. But there's more to this team than simply a lot of passes. While their starting lineup is a 4-2-3-1, the two pivots rarely play in a parallel position, with one pivot usually pushing forward into midfield, and Bologna will often start their attack with one holding midfielder. Motta made headlines a few years ago after stating he wanted his team to play in a 2-7-2, with the goalkeeper acting as the first midfielder. At first glance, it could be interpreted as a formation that looks like this. However, in reality, Thiago Motta's 2-7-2 is meant to be read from side to side, meaning there are two players out wide on each flank, and seven players in the center. In this case, it makes much more sense to consider the goalkeeper as the first of the seven midfielders, and provides us good insight into how Motta sees the game, wanting the goalkeeper to be an active part of the team's build-up. Their main objective is to hold possession in deep areas, drawing in the pressure in order to isolate the attackers against the defenders, and quickly create chances when there is space to attack. In fact, while their possession is high, their field tilt is relatively low, suggesting that the majority of possession happens in their own half. Their ability to hold possession in deep areas is second to none, and one of the most interesting rotations can be seen instantly from goal kicks. With the keeper in possession, the centre-backs will start either side of the goalkeeper, with the full-backs in a deep, connected position. However, as they play it around the back, one of the two centre-backs will push into midfield to reform the double pivot. This structure means the goalkeeper instantly becomes an active part of the game, and provides the team with an extra man, making it easier for them to find the free player, as with this rotation they will almost always outnumber the opposition's press. Depending on the structure of the opposition's press, they will usually look to move it indirectly into the free player by going through the two players in the centre. The rotations don't end there, and a lot of the times both centre-backs will rotate forward into this position, with the full-backs rotating into a more central position to form a back three with the goalkeeper, with the wingers dropping into a slightly deeper position to give support on the flanks. A good example of this rotation can be seen in their recent match against Fiorentina, with the keeper in possession, the centre-back Bukema rotates forward into the double pivot role, allowing Abishe to move into a position in the half space, where he acts as instant support to the fullback if needed. As the keeper is closed down, it frees up an indirect pass into the centre-back, and now Bologna have space to play it forward into the attacking set of players. Because of this initial rotation from the centre-back, it also means the holding midfielder was in a more advanced position to join the attack, and Bologna had four players on the defensive line, instantly looking to create a chance in behind. A simple move like this is good because it combines the two principles he mentioned from his time under both Mourinho and Gasparini. By moving the ball forward quickly, it means you can create chances when there is space to do so, but by doing it in a structured way, it also means you have more players ready to join the attack. From more active build-up positions, the base structure is a 4-3-3. The fullbacks rarely push forward and stay in close proximity to the centre-backs. This is because if one of the centre-backs pushes forward, they can instantly form a back three for defensive cover. Further up the pitch, the two midfielders will stay in a wide position in support of each winger. This is because Bologna will often look to move the ball directly out wide into the wingers, and in this way they can instantly have support from the midfielder and look for a 1-2. But by far the most dangerous player is the striker Zerkzi. His positioning is extremely dynamic often dropping deep into midfield and receiving the ball directly from the defenders, before laying it off to the two midfielders in the space between the lines. His heat map highlights his active role in the game, often hovering from flank to flank and constantly looking for the ball. As a result, he ranks in the top 94% of players in the league for expected goals, and in the top 88% of players for expected assists. Bologna's offensive style is extremely entertaining to watch, and their ability to create chances from a deep position means the opposition never has time to get settled. However, as we saw from his thesis, Thiago Motta's defensive intensity is just as important. 
Tiago Mota is heavily reliant on counter-pressing the opposition as soon as possible. At the start of the video, we noted how he admired how the German national team thought of defending when attacking, and thought of attacking when defending. And this principle is evident when watching Bologna play. When on the full attack, the defensive line will push up into the opposition's half, usually maintaining a 3 plus 1 defensive structure, with three players covering any opposition strikers, and one player to stop any passes coming in. This allows the whole team to push as high up the pitch as possible, ensuring that if they lose the ball, they are in close proximity to close the opposition down and force a long ball, or intercept the pass and create a chance. And this is what he means by thinking of defending when attacking. While the offensive set of players are looking to create opportunities, the defensive unit is ready for any potential counterattacks. Here's an example of this structure from their match against Roma. As Roma are able to get the ball away, the player up top is instantly surrounded, and Bologna are able to win back possession or stop their attack. However, not all counter presses are successful, and if the opposition is able to start a structured attack, then Thiago Motta's men will fall back into a more compact shape. The main idea is for the striker Xerxes to hover between the centre backs, while the wingers will cover the full backs. This often results in the opposition moving the ball centrally, where the two holding midfielders are extremely aggressive and will often win back possession in these areas, before instantly looking to play the ball in behind for a counter-attack. It's a similar concept when sitting in a low block. The team will often drop into a 4-5-1 shape, but as the opposition rotate the ball, the wingers and striker will always position themselves in a way where they can receive the ball in space. For example, as the ball shifts to the right flank, the left winger will hold a position slightly further up the pitch, given that if they win back possession, he is now in an extremely dangerous position to attack forward. And this is the idea of thinking of attacking while defending. Even when the team is sitting in a low block in their own half, the offensive set of players are always thinking of the best position to occupy to create the most danger when they regain possession. Thiago Motta's hybrid brand of football seems to be finally paying off, and regardless of Bologna's position come the end of the season, they're certainly a team to watch. And now, let me know, what do you think of Thiago Motta's tactics, and where do you think Bologna will finish this season? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out this video on Girona, and how their tactics have taken La Liga by storm. As always, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.